So now I'd like to welcome you to the Mission Innovation event at today's Low Emission Solutions Conference. I'm Felicity Glennie Holmes. I'm the Director of Communication for the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. And it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you here today to this session. I'd also like to welcome our first four speakers to the stage. And as they come up, please join me here. I'll give you a little bit of background to this event. For those of you who might not be familiar with Mission Innovation, it was launched last November at COP21 in Paris. The leaders from 20 countries gathered together and agreed to seek to double their clean energy investment, investments over five years with the goal of making clean energy widely affordable and available. And so now we're one year on from launch. And today we've gathered ministers from some of those countries together to share their success stories with us and update us on their plans and progress. So without further ado, I'm delighted now to hand over to Dr. Jeffrey Sachs, who will provide some opening remarks and set the context for the way that countries are helping to produce the innovation that will help us achieve our goals. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to be extremely brief because I'm uh, not the reason that we're here for this session. Uh, I just have a great uh, pleasure um, and thanks to introduce uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, Secretary of Energy, Ernie Moniz. If you want to know something about energy or global diplomacy, this is the man to go to. Uh, he's uh, really had two heroic roles in the international scene in recent years. One is an absolutely fundamental role in getting us to where we are right now on climate change and on technologies that we need for decarbonization. And the second is uh, a peacemaker uh, in an app, as you may know, an absolute pivotal, decisive role in the Iran agreement uh, with the Permanent Five. Uh, um, and it's a tremendous uh, honor, therefore, for me to welcome uh, you and to thank you for participating in the Low Emission Solutions Conference. I'll just give one minute of introduction to you and then turn it over to you and why we have this conference, though I'm sure you know. My dream always has been, let's get the engineers in the room. Because uh, for all of us uh, coming to the COPS year after year, we see a lot of our uh, favorite diplomats uh, and a lot of lawyers, uh, and uh, that's good. Uh, that was crucial in getting an agreement but we really need uh, the engineers and the scientists to tell us what to do, practically speaking, because we live in a world of systems. And the systems that we need are advanced energy systems and information systems and transport systems. And that's really why we're inaugurating this year the Low Emission Solutions Conference, which we believe should be a fixture of all meetings, that this is the place where world-leading technologists can get together to talk about what's happening and what needs to happen and how we can uh, direct our attention that way. So thank you very much for being here and we're extremely excited to hear uh, where this uh, great project stands now. Okay, well thank you, uh, Jeff. Um, uh, I've known Jeff now for, I don't know, roughly a couple of decades and he's never been so nice before. Uh, and so <laughs> But <laughs> uh, uh, I want to say that Jeff at, uh, at Columbia University has uh, uh, really put and made an imprint with appropriately named Earth Institute uh, and uh, mentioning systems. Uh, it's really about uh, doing everything uh, in, under that umbrella from, from science uh, and technology to, to economics and policy. And so uh, it's really, really been a, a, a terrific uh, contribution. Uh, and, and now at the UN, so I, but I, I won't go into that. Uh, so um, uh, thank you all for coming for this discussion about mission innovation. Uh, roughly a year after the announcement in, in Paris, uh, the, uh, clearly uh, the Paris Agreement uh, going into force uh, last week uh, is a very significant 
first step. I emphasize both significant and first. Uh, uh, very significant, obviously, with essentially every country in the world coming forward with, uh, with, uh, with, with, with good targets uh, in the 2025, 2030 time frame, but only first step because, as we all know, uh, while those NDCs uh, will be very important in getting us on a trajectory to where we want to go. It's only a trajectory, and the uh, deep decarbonization that uh, we, uh, we hold dear uh, for the mid-century and beyond, let's say, uh, will require uh, increasing ambition. It will also require innovation, and I think that was uh, this critical theme in Paris. Uh, in fact, the bookends of Paris were the innovation and private investor announcements on the first day, and then what you might call the policy Paris Agreement uh, uh, emerging, of course, on, on the last day. Now, we think energy, uh, uh, technology, innovation, and, uh, and policy are very synergistic. We won't get where we want to go without both of them uh, working uh, in, in an aligned way uh, to move forward. Now, uh, in the context of the uh, uh, Paris commitments, that time frame, uh, decadal, 10, 15 years, uh, clearly we still have to push on our technologies to lower costs. We have seen dramatic cost reductions uh, in some of the clean technologies, uh, uh, onshore wind, uh, solar, uh, the, the dropping 40, 50, 60 percent uh, just in the last uh, seven years. Uh, we've seen battery costs uh, come down by a factor of two uh, in that time frame. Another factor of two will be very important uh, for uh, penetration uh, in the transportation sector. LEDs, uh, incredible. We put out a, a paper on our website uh, uh, about two months ago, uh, saying that there was a 94% drop in LED costs over those seven years. Uh, it's already out of date uh, because they've fallen farther uh, just in the last two months. In the United States, at least, you can now go to Home Depot and buy, a, buy an eight-pack at about $1.35 each, uh, which, is, which is incredible. So we have to keep pushing on that, but for the longer term, the deep decarbonization, we're going to need dramatic uh, breakthroughs, in my view, in multiple sectors, not just electricity, but transportation, industry, and large-scale carbon management. And I think that's, that's the, 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 the task that we face. The MI countries, uh, now up to uh, 22 plus the EU, uh, have really come together in a very good way to start planning the path forward. Uh, a meeting in London recently, I won't describe in detail, that will come later, uh, put forward seven innovation challenges. I'm pleased to say that we, the United States will host a first technical workshop on the carbon capture uh, challenge next year. But again, you'll be hearing more, more about that. Uh, we will also be working with other countries to, uh, together collab collaboratively to map out the science agenda, for example, underpinning big breakthroughs in, in uh, in, uh, in, in technology. So this is a major step. And finally, I'll just mention that the in Paris, as I said, we had, at the, uh, at the same time as Mission Innovation was announced by 20 international leaders, including our president, President Obama, uh, at the same time, Bill Gates was there representing 28 international investors with the so-called Breakthrough Energy Coalition. And um, I, I can say uh, that uh, they will be announcing their fund uh, in, in a few weeks. Uh, they've, they've, they've pulled together, they will have an international board, uh, and so that private sector track, uh, not only the Breakthrough Energy Coalition, others as well, but that will be ver a very visible step forward. So I think uh, after one year, uh, we are, uh, uh, we're making uh, significant progress in mapping out the science and technology challenges, including those for long-term major breakthroughs, uh, and in forging the links to the private sector that we will need for accelerating the introduction of those technologies into the marketplace. Thank you. And my good friend, Miguel. Thank you, Els. Uh, this, ladies and gentlemen, this is a real pleasure for us for the European Union and the Commission to meet with you a year after of the, the launch of this initiative and to be already in a position to help the significant progress 
achieved so far. It shows the determination of the 23 members of, the, of this international effort to respond uh, to the challenges we face in terms of climate change with convincing answers in terms of clean energy solutions. And to do that, we have uh, wittingly chosen to collectively double our investment in public funding for clean energy year after year, I mean very high, doubling the 15 billion US dollars uh, we have initially been market to more than 13 billion US dollars by the end of 2020. And we have also invited, as the Secretary Moniz said, the private funding community to work with us and engage with researchers and provide the financial support necessary to help see clean energy research and development efforts bear fruit. I can confirm that in the European Union we are on track of delivering on our promise in terms of doubling our spending on clean energy, innovation, and we expect to reach our target of 2 billion by 2020 uh, smoothly and decisively. In our main reset program, uh, Horizon 2020, the European Union has committed to invest at least 35% of its total budget into climate-related activities, and that's uh, around 27 billion euros, and it's spending directly related to the mission innovation and development goals. And in addition, on top of our permanent fund for strategic investments, which have been operational for one year, and we will be doubling duration and size to provide a total of at least 500 billion of investments, notably in clean energy projects. By 2020, we have launched a new investment fund, the European External Investment Plan, who will boost investments in Africa and the European Union neighboring countries. And this will leverage up to 44 billion euros of investments. But most importantly, uh, we have to, to, to live by example and, and, and share experience. That's why we have ambitious targets for reducing emissions, for renewable energy, and for energy efficiency. And in a couple of weeks, we will present a package of legislative proposals to enable the European Union to achieve the targets. But we have also a, a lot to learn from our partners in mission innovation, because and I welcome in particular the, the detailed contribution that we have received from participating countries on the national strategies, the national targets and priorities to innovate and invest in clean energy. They are published in a consolidated country book on the newly revamped uh, Mission Innovation website, to which I would like to also draw your attention. And by opening up national research programs and sharing high-level information as energy needs, interests, priorities, and aspirations, Mission uh, Innovation move a step forward beyond current custom. They reveal the genuine commitment to this piece key information and underline our collective commitment to promote global innovation investment. This year has been a year of progress. We have established well-functioning working methods for our work and agreed a number of key priorities for future cooperation. We have made advancements on the governance of the initiative with setting an interim secretariat that has done a fantastic job so far. And we have narrowed the scope of our work and have managed to focus on concrete and dorsal engagements that will help us meet our mission innovation goals. And what we should also pride ourselves is the appeal that this initiative has. And I am delighted that Mission Innovation continues to attract a strong interest from countries around the world. And today, for me, it's a pleasure to, to announce the accession of, uh, to Mission Innovation of the Netherlands and of Finland, two European member states that are at the forefront of clean, clean energy innovation. And we are equally proud of the Commission to see the strong engagement of Europe in this endeavor. With the Netherlands and Finland, we will have nine European countries among the membership of the of Mission Innovation. So let me welcome the representatives of these countries on the stage for the remarks. Minister Sharon Dixma from the Netherlands and Ambassador Anvasara from Finland that are here with us today. Well, uh, Miguel, first of all, uh, thank you very much for that uh, welcome. It's an honor to represent the Netherlands government at the 22, um, 22nd uh, mission of member, uh, mission innovation. Unfortunately, um, um, I, I could be standing here with my colleague uh, who is also responsible for policies on energy and innovation, but you have to deal with me today. I hope you don't mind. Um, I'm proud that uh, the Netherlands uh, uh, can announce that we have joined a mission innovation uh, in the initiative on the basis of the commitments 
um, made under the National Energy Agreement, an agreement concluded with over 40 stakeholders up to the year 2023. And on the basis of this agreement, we have intensified our commitments on clean energy research, uh, development and demonstration. And for the Netherlands, ladies and gentlemen, it is clear that a clean energy revolution is needed to realize the energy transition towards a sustainable, low carbon economy. We have to work collectively on energy innovation, not, not just because uh, the climate challenge we face, but also because this is the only way forward for a new economy that is based on green growth. And I think if you look at the political affairs of last week, we urgently need more public support for what we are doing now on the issue of climate change and the energy revolution. And it cannot be only in rooms like this where people are already believers. So we have to reach out. And I think that this mission innovation can be helpful as an instrument to do so. In the Netherlands, we work together closely to develop our national energy innovation policies in a so-called golden triangle approach, the top sector energy. And with this framework, uh, all parties participate and invest to ensure that new energy innovations are developed towards their full market potential. One of the topics uh, we focus on is offshore wind. In order to achieve cost reductions in the production of renewable energy and electricity from offshore wind turbines, our research institutes, uh, private sector and the government closely work together to boost technological progress and to minimize risk. We also focus on an efficient integration of offshore wind onto, uh, into onshore electricity grid which requires significant technological innovations in terms of systems integration. So, let me conclude. Two weeks ago, I organized the National Climate Summit in the Netherlands. We had the motto, bring Paris home, and it was really a tremendous success. Uh, we brought in with 25 partners an uh, agreement on not only how to reduce carbon emissions, but also to store and reuse at least 8 million tons of CO2 emissions using smart grids with the next 15 years. So we look forward uh, further to engage with you, uh, our co-members in future of Mission Innovation, and we are really motivated to get a real success together with you. Thank you very much. Commissioner, Secretary, Ministers, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. It is my great pleasure to thank all the Mission Innovation Partners for the warm and frank welcome you have extended to Finland when we now join the Mission Innovation Initiative. I am doing this on behalf of my government and on behalf of our Minister for Economic Affairs, Mr. Olli Rehn, who unfortunately was not able to be in this meeting today, which he is very much regretting. My government is committed to working hard towards our common goals. We are already allocating a very significant share of our GDP to research and development, and we have pledged to double our public investments to renewables and clean energy systems by 2020. By investing in innovations, we are looking for further development of pragmatic and practical solutions to challenges we are all facing today. Indeed, the urgent need to control climate change has already obliged us to develop different kinds of approaches to promote clean energy and energy efficiency. Clean and renewable energies have a central role in reaching our ambitious climate goals. Finland is looking forward to working together and willing to share our experience of proven measures and tools to help also developing countries towards a sustainable and clean future. 
smart and flexible energy systems, advanced biofuel production, and energy efficient buildings with smart heating and cooling systems are some examples of the Finnish know-how. Cooperation between higher education institutions and businesses has been one key element in the Finnish breakthrough innovations. This cooperation has enhanced the commercialization of innovations and also promoted carbonless clean energy in a cost-effective manner. There is also one important lesson which we have learned. The smaller the economy, the more important public-private partnerships and international cooperation are. Ladies and gentlemen, governments create legal and fair frameworks and play the role of matchmakers and facilitators that support the cooperation and innovation of various interdependent players in promising new business areas. The purpose is that national advantages match the long-term business opportunities in global value systems. Mission innovation is an excellent way to enhance the progress. The Mission Innovation Initiative will encourage countries and growth-oriented businesses to productive cooperation in order to speed up development of new solutions for clean energy to mitigate climate change. Let us do this without delay so that the next generations can thank and be proud of us. Thank you, Ambassador, and thank you also, Minister. Uh, Mission Innovation is very happy to welcome both of your countries on board. And I'm delighted now to introduce Minister Hurt from the UK, who will give us an overview of some of the innovation challenges that are part of doubling clean energy investments over five years. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, so in politics, you, you develop an instinct for whether an idea is likely to succeed, whether it's got the right kind of energy and momentum uh, underpinning it. And I, I strongly believe, the UK believes very strongly, that mission innovation is, is, is absolutely the right idea at the right time. Uh, so I, I'd like to start by uh, congratulating Section Manizani and other people in this room, uh, such as Sir David King, who are really the fathers of this, uh, of, of this project and showed the political will and instinct to to, to, to make it happen, because it has real momentum, as I'd like to, uh, uh, to show. And, and that doesn't surprise me, because it meets a really real political need. So as a British climate change minister, thinking about how we in the UK meet our long-term, legally binding carbon commitments, I can just about see, when I look at 2030, how we might get to where we need to get to through kind of products and services and technologies that we can see, but when I look to 2050, it's a lot less certain. And I have a very strong instinct, as, as Ernie does, that uh, to get to the kind of 2050 trajectory, we are going to need uh, radical uh, innovation, because we're clear in the UK, and I'm sure every country feels the same. We're talking about totally changing our energy and our transport systems and the way we heat our, our homes. And so the Innovation agenda meets a very, very clear political need. But again, as we look around the world and see some of the challenges that private capital is trying to help tackle, and the amount of investment that's required and the amount of investment that's capable, it's clear that this innovation agenda also responds to a very clear market uh, demand. Uh, so it's, it is the right idea at the right time. It's got a tremendous uh, momentum to it, but what I, and, and so fantastic that so many countries have pledged to double their research spend. But what I particularly like about Mission Innovation is the question that was then asked, which is how can we be smarter in terms of making sure that this money is spent as intelligently as possible? How can we be smarter in working together to make sure we fully understand the gaps and opportunities and take the opportunity to coordinate our, way, our work where that is possible, where there's a uh, where there's a will. And so this question was posed. Um, and 
uh, at a conference in London quite recently, uh, the, the members came together to see, could we coalesce around seven core uh, challenges where we could think about pooling our work, working uh, together alongside all the stuff that we want to do independently. And, I, and I'll be honest, uh, some of my officials who helped organize that meeting said, we weren't entirely sure whether we'd reach agreement. 23 countries in the same room trying to identify seven core challenges. But actually, the meeting flowed fantastically uh, well. Again, that tells you something about the energy underpinning this, 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 this initiative. And there was agreement around seven core challenges which are set out on the slide behind me, which I hope you can, uh, you can see. These are the areas where we have agreed to uh, cooperate uh, where we can and where various countries have stepped up to say, well, we'd like to be part of the leadership on that and to chair it so the UK is, is stepping up on the, uh, the heat and uh, uh, cooling our homes uh, challenge. So this is, this is the, 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 the core challenge agenda. Uh, I think it's a start. I don't think it's a, a, a finish. There's lots of detail to be ironed through about how this will actually collaboration work in practice. But we have moved in one year from pledge and commitment to this kind of uh, to this kind of agreement with a tremendous amount of energy and enthusiasm underpinning, which tells you about the momentum underpinning uh, mission innovation and the contribution that it is capable of making to the collective challenge that all our countries face in terms of uh, decarbonising our energy and transports and housing uh, systems. This uh, mission innovation is absolutely mission critical to that challenge.